Robert Polis delivers his second State of the State address, pointing to his success in the first year and the work between Democrats and Republicans together. I'm Alan Janay. Good to have you with us this noon. Governor Polis talked about his plans for water, transportation, education, health care, and tax reform. But he started his speech by recounting his successes. He pointed out lower health care costs, taxes for small business, more affordable housing, and full-day kindergarten, while acknowledging it is a team effort. We should be proud that 95% of the bills that I signed last year were passed with Republican and Democratic votes. We shouldn't take for granted the cooperative spirit. Uh, instead, we should work to strengthen it, because the notion that we're all in this together is a much better approach to solving problems than ever trying to go it alone. After experiencing two teacher strikes last year, Governor Polis says it is time to address the administrative problems related to teacher pay. You know, our teachers, of course, one of the most important professions in our society, shouldn't have to work a second or third job just to make ends meet. We know that under Colorado's system of local control, individual districts set teacher salaries, but when I speak with school leaders, they want to pay teachers better. But because of the fiscal rules, the state spends too much money backfilling some of the wealthiest districts, not just in the state, but in the country. And that's truly at the root of our school funding issues. Together, we can fix the systemic problem and finally raise pay for our hardworking educators. Well, the governor talked about how state taxes went down to an historic low of 4.5%, but says there is still work to be done. I'm proud to announce today that we will be creating a bipartisan study group to work on making our tax code more fair by looking at ways to broaden the base and lower the rate by the end of my first term. And we look forward to working with you to make that happen. Broadening the base and, and, and lowering the rate will lead to higher wages and make balancing the family budget that much easier. In the meantime, I certainly look forward to working with you on other creative ways that we can provide tax relief and invest in roads and schools. Also today, Governor Polis recognized the parents of a Colorado hero. He called attention to the parents of Kendrick Castillo there in the chamber today. Kendrick and two other students stopped one of the young shooters in the STEM school shooting in Highlands Ranch last year, but Kendrick lost his life. Lawmakers rose to their feet with a long applause. Kendrick. It was their only child. Governor Polis is just wrapping up his speech now. Our political specialist, Sean Boyd, is in the House chambers. And once the governor is finished, we'll hear from Sean. She'll be talking with Republicans live here on CBS 4 News and New to get their thoughts as well. well. Our political specialist, Sean Boyd, joins us on the floor of the House right now. After the governor's State of the State address wraps up, she has Republican House Minority Leader Patrick Neville with her right now. Sean? You know, Alan, the governor's speech once again returned to that inaugural theme of a Colorado for all, starting and ending his speech talking about we're in this together. We can accomplish a lot together. So can they? Joining me, Minority Leader Patrick Neville. Thank you. So the governor mentioned taxes is one place. Lowering taxes is one place where you guys can find that common ground. Degree? Absolutely. It was actually good to see him hear him praise the tax cut that we're going to get under our tax pay bill of rights. Even though, you know, other people on the other side of the aisle might have supported referendum CC and that failed, they're going to get a huge tax cut based on that. And that's a good thing. And I was also encouraged to hear him talk about the rising cost of living being an issue. And quite frankly, the best way we can solve the, the cost of living crisis in Colorado is letting the taxpayers keep more of their own money. So the governor's agenda, much less ambitious than last year, recognition that there's less money to spend this year, but he did talk about 6,000 new preschool slots, a public health insurance option, and paid family leave. Is that realistic? Well, not everyone can be Santa Claus, as we know. And if you look at the public option, I think this is the, probably one of the most scary things that we're seeing down here in the, being proposed in the legislative session. I don't think this is a small step towards single payer. I think it's a giant leap towards single payer. And I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on that. Lastly, transportation, huge issue to voters. So the governor didn't really offer any new solutions, but he did say you put a lot more money toward transportation last session. You agree with that? 
You know, that's one of the issues that we talk about continually. No one's actually talking about real problems and actually solving the solution. We keep coming up with these crazy ideas that aren't actually solving the gridlock. We know tried and true adding more lane miles throughout the state is going to solve the gridlock in our state, and we just actually need to do that. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Alan, you know, before the governor walked in here today, um, he there were a lot of protesters up in the gallery, climate activists who feel like that he hasn't gone far enough when it comes to that particular subject and oil and gas, even though they passed that big oil and gas measure last year. So it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out as well this year. Mm -hmm. it, but it, it doesn't seem as disputatious, Sean, as things certainly do in Washington. Uh, a busy day for you today. You're spending some time with uh, the governor this afternoon, I understand. Right, and, and I'm going to be talking to one of the people that he introduced here today. A uh, single dad, his wife died of cancer a couple years ago. He has three daughters to raise, and he is benefiting from one of the programs that the governor has really highlighted in terms of health care. So I'll have more on that at 5 o'clock. Yeah, the health care costs are still an enormous burden for so many families, too. Sean, thank you very much. We look forward to seeing your reports this evening.